Hi guys, welcome to my next video in the Heather Green in Ogoge series that I'm doing. Um, today it is 40 degrees plus outside, being an Australian summer. So I am sat inside under the air conditioner with a bottle of cider. I had a cup of tea on my last video, but today it's definitely cider weather. And what I am going to be doing today is securing some trek. I have already secured two and three roads and half a set of points. Those points there has got the 08 and the terrier on holding it down while the glue sets. And uh, normally I use track pins. Um, I put PVA glue down underneath the cork then I pin it all down with track pins. But I'm not doing it on this one. Um, you generally get a bit of deformation to the sleepers which you can still see even when you paint everything. So this time I'm going for a different means and hopefully not having track pins. Um, so what I'm going to take you through is the marking out how I want it to lay and uh, take you through each step. What I have already done, or reach behind me, is I have my track panel that I want. I've already glue, um, glued, soldered the droppers on the back of the rail, ready to go down through the baseboard when I have it all ready to lay down. And because it's converging, if I just twist you around slightly, you might be able to zoom down if I just move the camera. I'm going up to a set of points, so I've had to trim the sleepers where they come together. Yeah. Just move the back. So basically, the first thing I'm going to be doing is marking out the centre of the track um, from where it comes out of the shed door at the correct spacing and I petal it in here. Okay, so first things first is to find the centre of the third track in. Um, the tracks are equally spaced in the doorway. Um, remembering this is just a phone mock-up, just to represent the doorway of the shed. Um, the last piece I did was from the rail was 94 millimetres to the centre. So the first thing I'm going to mark out is 94 mil to this edge of the rail. It's 94 mil there. And 94 mil down here. Measure, measure twice, check once and all that. So that is. 94 and then we'll do one right down here at 94 and with my longer rule which I possess just a case of join the dots and if I've measured correctly they should all line up which they do and There's the centre line. Okay, so I'm just going to double check that. It's wrong. 94. So the middle of that one would be 94. Okay, so yep, we're nice and parallel. Um, I'm not going to be going straight all this distance, but I need a short straight piece at the end because of the concrete walkway that will be going across the throw to the depot shed. Um, the measurement for the cork and the sleepers is 60mm, so I will now just go along 30mm either side of the line. Left 
decided that I, I won't need my long all the time, so I've got my full collection of engineer's rules. Look at that, this is exactly the same look as, the, as my rule. Well, that's handy to know. I wish I'd made that earlier. So, 30 mil either side of the line. So I now have my trap bed will be there. And what I will now do is the same from the centre of the set of points. I'll continue those out to intercept. So I'll just draw those lines on the board. I'll do that off camera, so back in a tick. OK, so what we now have is the three lines that come in from the doorway come this direction. And the three point, uh, three lines that come from the points, the sent straight route of the points comes in there. So basically where the doorway straight is and the point straight is, where the lots all intersect, you describe a line across, that is the midway point of the curve. So if you're doing it straight, curve straight, what you can do is measure the same distance on both directions and scribe a line across and the curve would be equal. Um, but I'm, if you're doing transitioning curves, it's not that easy. It's, it's more by, um, by eye thing. But in this case, two straight intersecting lines do the two routes, line across, that's the centre of the curve and you just measure the same distance out down each route. I hope that explains that easy enough. And the other means of doing it is once you have the straight lines drawn out, which is, gives you a line to work out where the trap panels need to be to intercept, you can put the straight along the line, line it up at that end line up the straight at the other end as long as you want it and where you got in between going by eye is where you want to put the track and how you know it's also partly using your eye does it look right does it look nice and straight and if you're happy with it so this follows the line at this end, that follows the line at that end as far as you need, and the curve in between is as smooth as you want it. So using my eye, and the straights at each end where I want it to be straight, the curve in between is fine. So I'm happy with that where that is now. So that is there. That is there. Take as many looks along it as you want, just as long as you're happy with it. But I, I can re-measure it to make sure. So from rail to rail. line there, on that pencil line at this end, a nice gentle curve. So what I shall now do, with my pencil, just draw along the end of the sleeve, because it doesn't have to be a straight line, it's just a guide, when we glue the cork down.
So I'm going to say the end of the straight is there, straight bit there, and straight bit to about here. And that bit there is curved. So next job is put down some cork. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is putting the cork down. Now on the curve, it doesn't need to be exact. Um, it doesn't need to be exact anywhere because you're just using it as a, a base. But what I like to do is, you've got a good straight edge on there. I like to make sure that that is perfectly straight to the line so that when you come to lay your track on the top over this, if you line the sleeper ends up with that edge it means it, that is exactly where you want it. It doesn't matter about the inside it's all going to get covered in ballast so you're not going to see any of it but as a guide for where you want it to be that's where you want and the line on the inside edge of the curve if you can see it, it helps to line up the ends of the sleepers when you put the track down. So the next bit is to trim and fit down your cork base. Okay, so having cut the cork, it's now time to glue it down. I'm using just Shelley's Aquid here, Aqua here, Aquid, I was right first time, Aquid here, uh, fast bonding wood glue. So I'm just going to spread it on, stick these down, and then to press it all down, keep it flat while the glue goes off. Okay, 
So the cork is now glued. The glue is very wet and slippery. Um, and we now need to weigh it down to keep it flat. So the best way of doing that is to gently place the track panel on top. It's going to go there anyway. And to hold it flat, the same as there. Get your nice big heavy Halgen O gauge diesel locos because they are heavy. More than enough weight to hold this all down. And that will do. So we'll leave that now to dry for a couple of hours. Um, in this heat today here it's not going to take a, an age to dry. It's quick set glue. Okay we're back. Time has lapsed a couple of hours. Well a good hour and a bit. So the glue has started to go off nicely. So we'll take the locos off, keep them handy because we're going to need them shortly. So we're clear again. Okay, so we'll take the track back off. Okay, so we'll just make sure that's all. on top. No blobs, no lumps or anything like that. So that's all nice down and firm and flat to the board. So the next thing is to drill the holes for the droppers. So place there and where it's got to go. Get the pen. I want one there. And one there. With my drill, which I happen to have here on the floor. drop through the board simple as that right one other thing I'm going to do before I put it together is with my razor saw I'm just going to run the saw up under the rail head up towards the chairs because the Pico fish plates that they supply tend to hit everything on the chairs before actually having enough clearance to close up on the join nicely so it's just take a bit of the plastic chair off the bottom of the rail As I said earlier um, on the video for the points, you've got to use 
insulated chairs on the frogs because we're switching the polarity on them. So little insulated fish plate so we don't forget on the frog rail. And the standard ordinary one. On the other row. Pushed home nicely. So that's in snug. So next is we'll drop the Dropper wires through the holes. So we can just get it all ready for when we so pull them through. So now we can just relax that out a bit and that will hold that in place. And back out with the rapid set. PVA glue just a nice coating None of this has to be perfect because what we will be doing is a ballasting over the top. So any bits of blobs like we have here where the glue is squeezed out from underneath, that doesn't matter. It will all be hidden. So just smear this out so it's a nice liberal coating. Still, it's over everything. And that's it. Get the glue off the fingers. So, gently get the brow in the fish plates. the wires down gently and lower the track into the glue. Now like I said we've lined up the edge of the cork so we line up the ends of the sleepers with the edge of the cork and the same at this end on the straight part and all the pencil lines that you can see just line it up nicely. And press it down into the glue. So by my reckoning, so we'll look along there, that's nice and straight. Look along there, the curve is even and it straightens up before it goes into the shed. So again, out come the heavy locos, which is why I put a bit of cork under the end so it doesn't flex. Just run the loco on, the track's not going to move, it's just going to sit in the glue. And we'll put the nice big heavy locos on, and they are heavy. We have a lot of fine books and stuff like that, and they just sit nicely on the rails. 
because that's what we designed to do. So there we go. Get a PVA off my finger. So everything is now in place, the curve's in place, it lines up, and that's it. So we'll leave that again to dry for a couple of hours, and I can trim the end of the panel. And if the load goes off, and just double check, the inside rail just needs tapping back a couple of mil. The outside rail is all good, everything else lines up nicely. And yeah, that's how I'm fixing track down on Heather Green. So there we go, the glue was near enough dry, the loco's moved out of the way. I've now got this piece here gluing. The points finished off with the back half there done. And that is pretty much it. So I'll just bring you off the tripod and give you a closer look. We'll go around it. So there you can see the glue is nearly dried into the shed. The points between two pieces over the join is a cut straight through dropper wires fitted to that end and as you can see the glue under the 09 or what will be the 09 and the Compton is still wet and if I can do this without dropping you there we go you can see the line of the rail is nice and smooth straight is straight and uh, I'll bring that over there. So a nice even curve up to the shed. Any questions as usual, drop them down in the comments and I'll come back to you as soon as I I'll see it and give you a reply. Catch you next time. Cheerio.